this is an article that came out on Science Alert. And they're saying there's no correlation between gun violence and mental illness. But most of us know this already. These folks use the mental illness card. Number one, look at the pattern. They're mentally ill after they've killed someone, after they've committed a crime, after they've got caught red-handed doing something. Then all of a sudden here comes mental illness. So what they're ultimately doing is making anyone with a mental illness automatically a dangerous person. And that should not be the case at all. Many of these folks may have mental illnesses and never harm anybody in their entire life. I'm here to tell you that's the majority. That's the majority. These folks committing crimes, they commit crimes because that's what they want it to do. They don't have no mental illness and there's nothing wrong with them. Except for the fact that they had a gun in their possession and decided that day they wanted to kill people. That's not a mental illness. That's just you trying to get out of a crime. See, they use mental illness in America as a get out of jail for free card or to make sure their crime doesn't go on their record. See, if it's listed as a mental illness, then that person that killed multiple people, that, that does not go on their record as a crime. They now have mental illness. They got to go for treatment. And I know people that work in the legal system. And they told me many of these folks screaming mental illness, as soon as they get out of their crime, you never see them again. They don't show up for any treatment. And that's how you know. That's another indicator that these folks are phony. When something is said too many times, you need to take a close look at it and they throw the mental illness card around like rain coming out of the sky. It's a save my ass from the criminal system card. But let's get into this story that came out on February 10th, 2019. Yet another study shows why we really need to stop blaming mental illness for gun violence. As gun violence reaches record highs in the U.S., the trigger finger of blame twitches for easy explanations. Mental illness is never far from the conversation in spite of a want of evidence. And it's not for lack of looking either. Now, another new study not only once again shows there's zero correlation between mental illness and shootings, but it's also finds far better predictors for gun violence that are shockingly mundane. You know what it is, y'all? They have access to a gun. That is the reason for gun violence. It's not mental illness. You have access, you have ammunition, you have the ability to go out here and kill multiple people. That is the biggest gun violence in America, ladies and gentlemen. It's not all of the things that these people tell you or they're lame as media gets up and reports every day. These mass shootings that take place in America on a daily basis, sometimes multiple shootings, as I showed you in my video recently, multiple shootings in different locations in America. That is the reason why gun violence is high in America. And as many of these mass shootings that occur on a regular basis, we should be seeing these stories in mainstream media all the time. We won't, we won't, not because of mental illness, because of the face of the person that pulled the trigger is why mainstream media will always steer away from these stories. They will periodically sprinkle a few of them out there, but they really truly don't want to report on mass shootings in America 
because they are severe. It is a bad problem in all of America. Researchers from the University of Texas Medical Branch weighed in on a debate that has divided not just America, but much of the world. Their conclusion isn't surprising, but is worth repeating. Having a mental health diagnosis, whether it's a mood disorder, PTSD, borderline personality disorder, or schizophrenia, doesn't make you more likely to threaten somebody with a gun. Thank you. Thank you. What does? Simply knowing you have access to a weapon. Exactly. It has nothing to do with mental illness. The statistics on gun violence in the U.S. are chilling. While violent crime has fallen sharply, over the past quarter century. And ladies and gentlemen, just pay attention to what I just said. This is why they are mass incarcerating primarily black men on non-violent drug crimes. Because violent crimes are down, especially in urban areas. They're down, they can't get you on violent crimes. This is why they're stacking them in on finding weed on somebody. Petty shit that really no one should be in jail over at all. That's the only thing they can get you in there as far as mass incarceration is concerned. They ain't getting you in there on no violent crimes. 2017 saw more gun deaths than any year in decades. More U.S. citizens have been killed by guns since 1970 than all U.S. service men and women killed in all foreign wars combined because America is a very, very violent place. It's not safe here. We're talking tens of thousands every year. The tally for mass shootings in 2019 already stands at more than two dozen. Actually, it was more like 30 in January. And the last time I looked was about a week ago. There were already six in the beginning of February. And I'm sure there's more because I have not looked for about a week now. Nobody is arguing that the numbers don't reflect a crisis. Finding ways to hold on to precious freedoms that represent national identity without compromising safety is the sticking point. So they go back to the saying that many of you probably heard in your lifetime, guns don't kill people, people kill people. The phrase has an equivalent in the academic world, dangerous weapons don't kill people, dangerous people do. And, you know, that's the thing. Why don't you just say these people are evil? They do these shootings because they are just evil. It has nothing to do with mental illness. They're just an evil person. Anybody that can think of killing a bunch of people and then going out and carrying that out, you're just evil. You ain't mentally ill, you're evil. Okay. It's not hard to see the appeal of the dangerous person prognosis as a convenient way to keep guns out of the hands of the bad guys. No, you know what the problem in America? Too many bad guys are in America with guns. Too many. The assumption isn't hypothetical either. The past decade and a half has seen a significant increase in the state laws keeping guns out of the hands of people involuntarily admitted 
for mental health treatment. But you know what? That should not be the only way a gun is taken from a person. You know, so you might have somebody that's off balance because it may have everything to do with the way they were raised and conditioned and not a mental illness at all. You won't do anything to that person unless mental illness is declared. Ooh, this is a jacked up system. Wow. Much of the limited research on gun violence and mental illness has focused on violence among individuals with severe mental illnesses or rates of mental illness among individuals arrested for violent crime, says Lou, focusing on a narrow section of the population risk uh, selection bias. So to get a bigger picture, Lou and the Temple and Temple uh, collected survey data on 663 volunteers partaking in a long-term study on firearm use. All were asked questions on gun ownership and their mental health history. Countering to public beliefs, the majority of mental health symptoms examined were not related to gun violence, says Lou. And it, it never was. It never was, y'all. There's no correlation. They made that correlation. Let me just tell you this. If you notice, it's primarily one group of people screaming mental health. If mental health was a factor, it would be used across the board. It's not. It's a get out of jail for free card, y'all. That's all it is. It, it has nothing to do with gun violence or the person that committed the crime. Everybody that commit crimes is not mentally ill. They're just evil. Okay. They're just an evil person, but no mental illness is there. You know, but this is something they need to use because that's where most of the crime in America is coming from. So that being said, they have to make it look like those aren't really crimes. That's an illness when it is very much a crime. That's all. And that's why the FBI numbers look the way they do. It should be much higher and greater for certain groups of people. It should be much higher. But when you can get a court to believe you're mentally ill, then that crime is now wiped off the books. That's how it's done. But these folks aren't mentally ill at all. Okay. There were some notable exceptions. Hostility, for example, made an individual three to five times more likely than an individual would have used a firearm to threaten another person while considering a characteristic that can influence certain mental health diagnosis on its own hostility doesn't constitute an illness. Thank you. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, hostility is shown in children and adults and elderly people too. So the next time your kid fall out on the floor with a temper tantrum, that means mental illness or they act hostile because they didn't get their way. That's a mental illness. No, that ain't mental illness. <laughs> no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Your, in, in, your inability to get along with your kid is a parenting child issue, not mental illness. So they're trying to link certain factors to mental illness. And, you know, that's really a shame for the people that are truly mentally ill in this country, because what they're saying is just from the gate, you are dangerous. And that's not the case. Most of these, the majority of these folks that are diagnosed with mental illness, they're not a danger at all.
by far the most significant clue to the propensity for gun violence is simply knowing where you can get your hands on a firearm exactly. Exactly. I have access to a gun. I just feel like today I want to get out there and kill people. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill people. That's not mental illness. Not mental illness. Especially when we see these cases where they planned the max shooting out in advance. They planned the whole thing out. They took X amount of weapons in there with them. That's not mental illness. Not mental illness. You may label it that, but that's not what it is. Those who answered, do you have access to a gun if you need it or wanted one? Okay, so they were asked 18 times and yes, they had access to a gun and more likely to use it, you know, if they felt threatened. Um, let's go down. There's a lot to unpack in such a simple, unsurprising statistic. I mean, you have the right to defend yourself, okay? But all of these mass shootings have nothing to do with stand your ground because <laughs> we people will go out there looking for a problem on purpose. That's not stand your ground. Many of these people hate other people, maybe on a job or they just woke up one day, they got guns they have never used on people and they want to use them on people. Not mental illness. Um, those who know where guns, um, know where to get a gun could be more likely to be immersed in a culture of firearm use, for example. The study has a few limits to keep in mind while the sample population itself was well mixed and of a decent size. Just a small fraction of the participants had ever used a fire, uh, a gun, okay, to make a threat. So only a tiny fraction of these people that were mentally ill used a gun to threaten someone, a tiny fraction. That tells you the majority with mental illness are not using guns at all. But because it's gotten so overused, it now automatically gives them, puts them in a bad light if law enforcement has to show up and there's mental illness. And that should not be the case, ladies and gentlemen. That should not be like that. Okay, um, survey also suffer from their own problem in acute, I'm sorry, inaccurate and honest reporting. The researchers, the message remains crystal clear. The best obstacle to gun violence is distance. So in other words, stay away from guns if you don't want to see a lot of gun violence, but we know that's not reality in America. Taking all this information together, limiting access to guns, regardless of any other mental health status, demographics, or prior mental health treatment is the key to reducing gun violence, says Temple. Um, and, and if you notice, a lot of these people that are claiming mental illness, they never have a mental illness until they're caught up in the criminal justice system. Then they have a mental illness. That should say a lot. But, you know, all they'll do is say, well, you know, they had a problem. They just couldn't afford to get help. You know, ladies and gentlemen, none of these mass shootings, very few of them are being done by people with mental illness. It's just not happening at all. At best, profiling individuals with a um, mental health condition as a violent risk wastes resources and provides false security that does nothing to address actual cases. The cost is likely to be far greater, promoting stigma that 
abstract, uh, uh, ostracizes, I'm sorry, ostracizes and prevent those experiencing problems from seeking help. It's time we did away with the crazy talk. I agree. You know, many of us probably know folks that are mentally ill or we know they have problems. I see these people out in public around me. You know, when I go out shopping, you can tell something is wrong with some of the people in there. You can tell just by the way they're behaving, but that doesn't mean they're going to pull a gun out and start shooting people. You know, I, I have talked to people that you can tell something is definitely wrong with them, but those folks still don't pose any threat with guns. There's a woman that lives right around the corner with me. I see her all the time. And she has, definitely has some problems, but she's been there for years and never picked up a gun to kill anybody. So I do agree with this article in the sense that, you know, the mental illness thing for gun violence need to be done away with. The mental illness thing for any crime you get caught committing in America all of that need to be done away with, but it won't for obvious reasons, ladies and gentlemen. You know, again, why is it being heavily used by one group, but not by all of the other groups? That should say it all right there. And it should tell you what the intent for using mental illness really is. Please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. And ladies and gentlemen, most people with mental illness do not pose any threat physically or with a gun. They just simply don't. Peace, family.